Alrighty, everybody, I can't, well, I actually can believe I'm saying this because I am always right, but of course, the people who I disagree with politically ended up being insane. Who could have possibly predicted this? Who on earth could have possibly predicted that people I disagree with politically would end up being insane? Impossible to predict something like this. No one could have seen it coming. Absolutely no one. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you might recall that roughly a year ago, I'd say, maybe a little bit less, I covered a group called Black Hammer. Now, for those of you guys who aren't aware, Black Hammer is what is called a Black Separatist group. Now, Black Separatist groups are basically just Nazi groups. They tend to work with groups like the Proud Boys and other white nationalist neo-Nazi groups because at the end of the day, despite their difference in, you know, seemingly in their difference in, uh, you know, opinions, at the end of the day, they have the same goal achieving complete racial segregation and genocide against a certain group of people, I'm sure you can guess which, and uh, they tend to work together because of that. The particular group I'm referencing, Black Hammer, actually specifically partnered with the Proud Boys, ironically enough, just to give you an idea of what kind of people these are. Now, the leader of this group, Black Hammer, is named Ghazi Kodzo. Or at least many of you guys would not be faulted for believing that. His real name is actually, I shit you not. Georgia Senator what? John. No. Off why? Why is it playing? Why is it playing audio? Why? It wasn't doing it before. Um. Had an image before. His real name is Augustus. His real name is Augustus. The the true name of Ghazi Kozo, Kozo is Augustus. I, I genuinely thought that was his real name, but it is not. The fact that he voluntarily gave himself that name is quite hilarious. It's give him a wedgie. It's almost like he gave himself a wedgie though, right? No, 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 hold on. Augustus is a cooler name than Ghazi. I'm sorry. Augustus is a cooler sounding name than Ghazi. Why not just own that name? That's the thing that I don't understand. Why would you replace... Augustus with fucking Ghazi. I don't know. Maybe because it rhymes with Nazi, which he is one. That secret uh, group that they both hate, the Nazis and the, uh, you know, the black separatists, that secret little group that I mentioned before. It's the Jews. They both hate the Jews. Who would have thought the one thing? It's like the meme. You know that one meme where it's the, the black arm and the white arm? They're really muscular and they're going... It's like that. Hating Jews is, is the text where their hands meet, you know? Regardless, though, this group, the Black Hammer group in particular, is actually very entertaining. I know that what they stand for is horrific. Their ideology is horrible. And, you know, they're, I wouldn't argue, dangerous people on a larger level, but on a smaller ground level probably pretty dangerous people to be spending time with or hanging out with um but at the same time they're pretty funny it's pretty hard not to laugh at them right you know like it's all a joke when, when you see gazi kodzo there and his like joker makeup on and he's like talking about Anne frank being a colonizer it's very easy to laugh at it well unfortunately it's no longer jokes it's no longer just a game Warrants allege two were held against Will, one raped prior to 911 call from Fayetteville Black Hammer Party home. An 18-year-old was found dead inside the home after police arrived and ordered everyone out. Arrest warrants for the leader of a group that many people have characterized as extremist allege that a 911 call leading to a SWAT response and the finding of an 18-year-old dead 18-year-old dead inside the home was preceded by two group members being held against their will at gunpoint and one of them raped. Now, for those of you guys that are unaware, I did a video a little while back about the abuse that was happening inside of the Black Hammer organization. There was somebody who was an ex-member of the organization, actually multiple ex-members of the organization, who had come together to make call-outs on Ghazi and a few of the other leading members of uh, Black Hammer for the abuse that would occur inside of the households that they would inhabit. 
um, Gazi would basically pull... For any of you who remember uh, Izzy Bear? Hypers in chat, if you remember what Izzy Bear did and how she got canceled, what she got called out for. My, more or less, Gazi Kodzo got called out for that. N no cigarettes, chicken wings, and ATVs, though, but I'm sure, maybe cigarettes. Just, just generally stealing, not, you know, just being abusive and, and uh, kicking people out or threatening to do so if they don't follow whatever he demands. Things like that, right? The warrants also say the 18-year-old, who police have said died by suicide during the SWAT standoff, was one of the two armed individuals who locked the victims in the garage where the rape occurred. The group, a self-styled revolutionary collective called the Black Hammer Party, meanwhile has said the 18-year-old, who they identified as AP, was one of its leaders and refutes the claim that he died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The group's reported leader, Augustus Romain, known as Ghazi Kodzo, yes, that is Ghazi's full name, Augustus Romain, is in custody following the incident this week in Fayetteville. He is facing charges including aggravated sodomy. Aggravated sodomy? Okay. Uh, that is an interesting charge. Aggravated sodomy? It, yeah, ang I'm sorry, I just... I just like the the implication of those two words next to each other. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh about that. I really shouldn't. Two counts of conspiracy to commit a felony and criminal sh and criminal street gang activity, and two counts each of being a party to assaulted to agree aggravated assault, being a party of uh, to false imprisonment and being a party to kidnapping. That is a lot of charges. The arrest warrants obtained by Eleven Alive on Thursday say Romain directed AP and another member, 21-year-old Xavier Ruchin, known as Kino, to quote-unquote point guns at two other members and quote, force them to point from the common area of the home into the garage with padlocks on the garage door so that Ghazi could commit sodomy. Why do they use that term? In the original incident, Police said nine people voluntarily came out of the home when officers arrived on scene, with a robot later searching the home and finding AP unresponsive with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. The warrants do not make clear what happened during the standoff to the two members who'd allegedly been locked into the garage. They do identify Rushin as the individual who was earlier reported walking a dog around the Woodbine subdivision and then allegedly ran off when que when questioned about a kidnapping call we received from the address he lives at. Rushin faces charges including aggravated assault, kidnapping, false imprisonment, conspiracy to commit a felony, criminal street gang activity, and obstruction. The warrants allege the Black Hammer Party is an organization documented as a criminal street gang which engages in defined criminal acts. The Black Hammer's group, which orients itself around anti-capitalist and black liberation themes, has previously announced associations with the Proud Boys and declared war, quote-unquote, with other leftist and liberal groups, such as Antifa and Black Lives Matter, on the apparent grounds of being insufficiently revolutionary. Hey, um, can I point something out here about the reporting of this article? Isn't it interesting that this... I don't know what the political leanings of Eleven Alive are. You guys can tell me. It seems more like a tabloid site. Regardless, isn't it interesting how they frame a group that's allied and associating with the Proud Boys and declaring war on leftist organizations? Interesting how they refer to that as being a leftist group. Stop calling groups progressive because black people are running it and using their race as a fucking shield. I'm sorry, but when black people advocate for genocide, that doesn't make it woke, okay? Woke isn't when minorities do something, all right? That's not how that works. That isn't what that is. That doesn't make it leftist. It's just ethnic genocidal ideology. That's all it is. It's all it's ever been. Black doesn't equal woke, guys. Just a just reminding all of you, for those of you guys who forgot. It has also published narratives against the Centers for Disease Control Prevention, Big Pharma, and COVID vaccines. Wow, sounds exactly like a right-wing organization. Crazy how they call them a left-wing one. 
The group itself claims it was operating as a sort of radical decolonizing collective out of the house, out of the house, working to feed and support homeless and poor communities. Eleven Alive spoke to Romain at the scene Tuesday before his arrest, and he said, quote unquote, I came outside. I talked to one of the officers. I told him we have someone in there who is mentally different. He added that that's at the time, the 18-year-old would never take his own life. Both Romaine and Rushin are being held at the Fayetteville County Jail. Police have not yet offered any details about any of the individuals who were at the home. And that is currently all of the information that we really have about this. Xander Hall, legit, the only reason why Black Hammer isn't homophobic is because Ghazi is gay. I'm sorry, but I, I do think that Black Hammer is homophobic. I'm pretty sure I've heard them do the whole, like, homosexuality is something used by white people that's being pushed on the black community in order to like make them more uh, uh okay with the idea of white people being seen as being as oppressed as black people that's more or less the sentiment that i hear from like that political group in regards to gay people and it seems somewhat consistent with what black hammer believes like they'll do the they'll do the virtue signaling about queer POC members of their group, but at the same time, they play into the literal neo-Nazi conspiracy theory that white Jews or whatever are, like, pushing gayness on the black community or transness in the black community or whatever the fuck. It's really, really weird. But it's real. It's a, it's a real thing that, that people believe. And it's, it's more popular than you'd think. I touched that on that in my homophobia video. Yeah, Pillow did a really good video on homophobia and the black community and how, like, the particular propaganda that was used to appeal to, like, American black populations here were a bit different than the types of homophobia that you'll see, like, generally among, like, your average, like, homophobic white guy. A little bit different. There's some interesting conspiracies and ideas that go into, into that brand of homophobia. Highly recommend a Pillow's video. It's interesting. Anyway, there's also a uh, a video that goes along with this, and I'm curious because I think it comes along with video and footage of the actual arrest in the scene. Zan, what do they think of black Jewish people? So, if I were to be honest with you, I would guess that they believe that black Jewish people are valid and that white Jewish people are, like, fake imposters is basically their idea. Yeah, it's weird shit. It's really weird shit. Don't obsess over your identity, guys. It's, it, it doesn't matter. Listen, your identity matters as much as those that want to oppress you for it care about it, okay? That's how much it matters. Imposters among us. Yeah. Anyway, um, can we talk about cults for a moment? I feel like it's important we talk about cults. Cults take a lot of different forms. And this was obviously one. Black Hammer was a cult, without a doubt. If you, if you have more than three brain cells, then you should be able to figure that out. But I imagine to a lot of the people who fell into it, it didn't look like one, did it? It masqueraded itself as this ultra-progressive, super, ooh, not really ooh, ooh soft, but as being a militantly progressive, take no bullshit, get out there on the street and help people, uh, get with it, or get the fuck out of our way kind of leftism, right? That was the way they kind of presented themselves, at least to the gullible people who thought this movement or this group had anything to do with progressivism. Well, the left has a very different way of engaging in cult behavior than the right. Because, believe it or not, people who are on the left will start cults. You guys remember Onision? You guys remember Onision's cult? What was it called? Seseska? Seseska? Onision is decidedly left-wing, at least in his public positions and what he says, and the guy is fucking insane. And he used progressive ideology to lure shit tons of, let's be honest, teenage girls into his weird online website cult shit, right? He's left? Yeah, he's, he's pretty much on the left. Listen, I know it, it sucks to say, but as far as his positions goes, go that he publicly says he's pretty left-wing. Certainly not a conservative. I know. Isn't it crazy? I know. But it's true. At least in the positions he espouses. Um, which is really all that matters on the internet. Because, I mean, look. Th this group is literally, literally calls itself leftist. 
People will refer to you as whatever you call yourself on the internet. You can be a Nazi and call yourself a liberal, and a certain population of people will actually take that shit seriously because they've got absolutely no critical thinking skills and will just take you at your word for anything. Regardless, though, um, I think it's important to keep an eye out for when bad people who are on the left take advantage of keywords and things they know that people on the left like to hear in order to sway them and to make them disarm themselves in a way and to put their guard down. Because in the case of Ghazi Kodzo, what was he doing? He was offering shelter and producing content that people agreed with uh, to his audience, which lowered their, their sense of security or, or lowered their sense of insecurity. It lowered their guard, made them feel safe with him, made them, you know, sort of attached to him and indebted to him. And then he took advantage of that. Just like a cult leader does. It just looks different than, say, online or specifically on the right when, say, they look for somebody who's like a straight white man who's kind of down on his luck and not really doing so well and uh, needs to blame somebody for all the problems he's dealing with. And so maybe someone comes along and explains to you that it's, uh, well, maybe there are some people responsible for your problems. Maybe we ought to do something about it, you know? It's a little bit different than that. And in this case, in this case, I think it led to more or less the biggest danger that I think Black separatism actually, uh, you know, poses to American politics. Unlike white, se like white separatism or white nationalism or whatever, I don't think that black separatism has a real chance of harming American politics, of like actually achieving anything and causing any real segregation to happen or anything like that. So I wouldn't worry about that. However, what I do think is a concern is that tons of people on an individual level are going to get fooled into joining groups like this because they've got nowhere else to go and they feel they agree on a lot of things politically with these groups and they're going to be taken advantage of. We've seen it happen before and on the internet, it's even easier for people like that to seek those they would leech off of out. Trust me, I would know. Yeah, it's a bit how like how tankies are politically irrelevant in America, but like, Ouch. I wasn't talking to you guys. I was talking about you know who. Um, no, tankies are not politi politically relevant in America, so they don't really actually cause any real harm to American politics of the world. They're not getting bills passed. They're not hurting anybody or anything. <laughs> the biggest harm tankies do is making the left look bad. Pretty much that. They make the left look terrible. They're horrible optics for the left. That's about the most harm they do. But, like, I'll say that, like, these cult leaders on the left who will use woke language to mask, like, the most scummy behavior and people will defend it because they say the right keywords, really, really disturbing, really disturbing shit. And I've warned about it for years. Well, with all that said, if you enjoyed this segment, I really appreciate you watching. Please consider dropping a like on the stream. I really do appreciate it. It helps the stream, the video, or if you're watching after the fact, the VOD out a lot. And of course, if you want to support me, you can follow my social medias linked down below. Uh, that's where you can find more of my general content online. You know, from I especially recommend you follow me on Twitter. That's where all of the best memes are happening. On top of that, of course, you can support me financially to help me save up so I can start the Quail Arc in Seattle by donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or gifting a sub uh, on my website. I'm sorry, I'm... My, the weed is, like, destroying my brain at the moment. Jesus Christ. Uh, you can also support me on YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. Links, of course, in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching, and always, and as always, have a good one.